Hi there! In this video I will show you my newest tool which is Terra Painter. This tool lets you create different types of tears and damages and different types of fabrics, for example like this rugged cloth over here or like this shirt or this jute burlap sack over the scarecrow's head or this woven hat or like this fluffy scarf. And how this tool works is simply when we are all set, which we'll get into in the later part of this video, all we need to do is to enter weight paint mode and where we paint the weight the tears will appear. We also have a set of parameters at our disposal to customize the final look, but before we get into that let me first show you how to install this tool. So in here we have this new scene with these shorts and we have the asset browser over here with some of the tools that you might already know and we need to enter the edit preferences now and in here we have to set up the file path for the folder containing the blend file with all the assets. So we copy the directory, we paste it over here and now once we are set we can uh, save the preferences and now you will see all the presets over here in the asset browser. So let's now start with the third painter default. We just drag and drop it into the scene and we have it over here in the modifier tab. And the first thing we need to do is to create two vertex groups. We select the first one and let's pick it as the vertex group for the tears. And now it is important that the one we picked is also highlighted over here since when we enter the white paint mode this will be the group we'll be editing. And uh, now that we are in weight paint mode, I also recommend hiding the overlays. You can do it with this button. And now that we are all set, we can start painting and you will see now that wherever we paint the weights, the tears appear. So yeah, that's it for the first vertex group for the tears. And now let's move on to the second one. And the second vertex group will help us with the border fuzz, which is another layer of detail uh, that we can turn on over here. And as you can see, it shows up in some places where it is not uh, needed. We just pick the second group. Also remember that it is highlighted over there. And now where we paint weight for this vertex group, we hide our border fuzz. So now <clears throat> let's get back to the vertex group for the tears. And what you can see over here is the final look, which consists of four uh, layers of details. The first one uh, is the width layer that you can see over here. And on top of that, there is the fuzz layer that we can turn on and off. Then we have the border fuzz layer and finally we have the layer for the preserved threads that we can set for the weft, warp or for none. And to see uh, what weft and warp is, these are the two directions that construct the weave. Uh, and uh, we can see it over here. The weft is, are the horizontal threads and while the warp are the vertical threads in regards uh, to the UV unwrapping. All right, let's reset the colors to the default ones uh, by drag and dropping and let's move on now to the presets. So yeah, we have our presets over here. We can delete this group for now and let's drop the jeans preset into the scene. And now you will see that once we set up our vertex groups, everything jumps right into the place. Yeah, and generally speaking, presets are like the same tool, just with different default values. And also it is important for this tool to work that the UVs have the default name, which is UV map, and also that rotation and scale are set up properly. And then we have the proxy settings over here. And proxy transfer is a functionality for high poly meshes, for very dense meshes. We'll get back to it in the final part of this video. And if we were now to take a sneak peek into some of the functionalities, uh, you can see over here we have this nice roll effect for the threads. Mm, and then 
we have also some clamping settings which we can also set to negative values and then we can also change the gravity uh, strength for uh, the threads either preserved or any other layer uh, and then finally we also have some noise settings and among them we have the spread setting. So as you can see there are really a lot of parameters that will help you achieve a very specific final look and they are all laid out in these panels where they are set up very logically and they give you a lot of control over the final result. Alright, and now we are ready to go through all of the parameters from top to bottom. Let's start with the first one, the Add Noise to Tear. And what it does, it creates this jacket line over the edges of uh, border edges of the tears. And you also have a frequency setting for it. And then next up is the Threads UV. UV, so uh, you can see that this mesh is now unwrapped and you can see the texture over it. And next up we have the proxy, which will come back in the final part of this video. And now let's look into the tear settings. Uh, so if we show only tear for now, and here is our mesh. And uh, the first of the settings is the push. Mm, so when we change that, you can see it appear over here. Then we can turn on and off the randomness of the push and also change the frequency for it. And in the similar manner we have the edges noise, which gives a more uh, random offset to all of those uh, vertices and also frequency for it. And then the last parameter is the influence distance, uh, which is counted in the number of uh, vertices from those borders. And over here you can uh, see that we can change the thickness of the width. And also we have this extra setting for weft and warp, so we can change uh, the width proportionally between weft and warp direction. And then next up <clears throat> we have the thickness of the fuzz. Uh, we can change the thickness of the fuzz separately and also the thickness of the border fuzz. And uh, also while we at the topic of thickness, uh, right at the bottom in the extra settings there is the setting of uh, the taper with which we can uh, customize the final look uh, some more. Alright, and now let's move on to the weave. And over here we have the first off, we have the spacing setting, like so. And actually, before we move on, let's uh, go into the noise setting and let's the, make this noise for the weave more subtle so we can see more clearly what we are doing exactly. And for the spacing, we also have this proportional editing between the weft and the warp. And next up is the angle setting. And then we can make the length be uh, random like so. And for this randomness, we have the frequency setting and also the proportional length between the weft and the warp. And uh, yeah, let's also hide for now the preserved threads. And here you can see the push and we can change the shape of this push. And then finally this very nice effect of rolling of those threads. So all those combined you can see how you can achieve a very unique look. Alright and now moving on we have the next uh, layer of detail which is the fuzz. And most of the settings are uh, the same as for the weave and there are a couple of uh, specific ones. So the specific setting for uh, the fuzz will be uh, the clamping so we can change the clamp factor and also the clamp size for it. And then there is the uh, length, weft and warp. So uh, let's hide the width for now so we can see it more clearly. And uh, yeah, if we set it to uh, 0.5, it is uh, equal to all sides. And now we can change between the weft and warp which works well if we combine it with the preserved threads like in jeans for example you know if there are uh, threads uh, left in horizontal for example we want less of the fuzz on the sides like so. 
And then finally, the last uh, parameter for the fuzz is the row, which works uh, similarly as it does for the weave. And next up will be the border fuzz, which has all the same settings as the fuzz, with the exception of this one extra masking vertex group that you can set up over here. All right, and now let's take a look at the preserved threads. Uh, first of all, we can control amount of them with the threshold. And actually, before we continue, let's add a couple of more tears uh, so it's all more visible. All right, and uh, back at it. So we have the threshold, then we have the frequency, and on top of that frequency, we can add even more randomness with the distortion. So that's it, and then we can uh, choose between weft, warp, or we can select uh, none if we don't uh, need the preserved threads. So next up is the gravity panel, and over here mm, we can change the gravity for each of the layers separately. Mm, and if we need it, we can also set the negative value over here. And next up is the Mm, is the noise panel over here, also separately for each of the layer. And over here we have the strength and the frequency setting. And for the fuzz and for the border fuzz, there is this extra spread setting that works like that. And we have the control of the shape of this spread. And now finally we arrive to the last panel, which is the extra panel, where we also have some very interesting settings. The first setting is the width strength, with which we can make it more uh, pronounced. And also there are some settings uh, that are named LDIF. L stands for the length. So we add more divisions along uh, the length of the threads. And over here you can see how the width strength uh, affects the final look. Like so. And like I said, uh, you can uh, see up close how we affect the geometry with this LDIF setting, which also works for both the border fuzz and for the fuzz separately. Uh, yeah. And then next up, we can also change the number of segments in the profile of the thread with this setting over here. The taper thread we already looked at and um, uh, next up is the root noise, uh, which will give it more chaotic look, less of a straight line that you can see over here. So the threads appear more randomly. And then we have this very nice setting of the cup ends, if you want a closed geometry. And then next up is the tear inset. Uh, so you can see over here that when I change this value, we cover the tear that we created uh, with the cloth smash. And then finally, there is this Texel Adapt setting. By default, it's on. And what it does is that it will disregard the size of the UV islands when calculating the spacing and the length of the threads. And now, after going through all these parameters, let's once more take a look at the presets and uh, how different look we can achieve combining all of those settings. So here we have this burlap setting uh, preset, here we have the uh, fluffy preset, and if we uh, set the groups, it all jumps right into the place. And uh, next up, we have the, this rugged preset that is very nice. So yeah, that's it for the presets and now moving on uh, to the last part, which is the proxy transfer. So in here we have our scarecrow and as you can see, this mesh is pretty low poly for it to work fast. It's around 30k uh, without the threads. And if we look at the source garment, it's around uh, 170k and after retopology even higher which is actually good for this presentation it's over half a million and um, if we try to 
add the stir painter onto it and work with it, you will see that it's unfortunately pretty laggy and uh, it's laggy because even painting weights is actually slow on such uh, dense meshes. But yeah, we have a workaround for it with this proxy transfer. So what we need to do, we just need to copy it. And since I uh, retopologize this mesh with uh, my other asset, Retopo Planes, which I actually highly recommend, all I need to do is actually only to unsubdivide this mesh, since it keeps all the subdivs to the lowest. But uh, if you uh, don't have Retopo Planes, then there is this extra group uh, for it, uh, which is called uh, proxy. So we just create a copy. Let's uh, drop uh, this proxy onto it and uh, adjust the scale of the detail. Uh, I recommend to keep it uh, somewhere close to the original one, not to go too low, and apply this modifier. And now we can work with it. And since it's a lower poly count, it will work pretty fast, as you can see over here. And now, next step, we just uh, need to copy the modifier onto this high poly version. And it's also important uh, that this modifier is disabled in viewport on the low poly mesh. Uh, and in here, we just select the proxy transfer, we pick the proxy object, and uh, yeah, once again, remember that on the low poly it needs to be disabled, and in the, on the high poly we can enable it and you can see it work over here. And then there is this extra option of proxy threads copy, and if it's on, it will copy exactly the threads from the uh, proxy mesh, and if off, it will uh, calculate those threads using the high poly mesh. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you find this tool useful and it will help you create some great artwork. As usual, you can find it on Gumroad and the Blender Market, and to keep up with the news and updates, I recommend subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching.